All right, so for today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the global distribution of water. You should hopefully be doing this on April 14th, or maybe you're getting ahead of the game and doing it before or catching up. Just make sure that your lessons are turned in by the end of the week. Before we get started, we're going to do a quick do now that's going to help us review what we learned last time. So here is a graduated cylinder. And what is the liquid? Um, Sorry, what is the volume of the liquid? So I have a graduated cylinder and I need you to tell me what is the volume of the liquid? Question number two, we have a thermometer here. And so I need you to tell me what is the temperature? I know that it's a little blurry. Um, just do your best. It might help to have maybe a edge of paper to help you go across those graduations. So what is the temperature? Let's go ahead and review our do now questions. So for this first one, we're looking at this graduated cylinder. Now I want us to notice, right, last time we talked about the meniscus. The meniscus is this here. It's that curve that we begin to see. When you look closely, it looks almost like if it has two sides. Again, that's because of that curve that happens when the molecules in the liquid are attracted to the sides of the cylinder. But remember, we always need to measure from the bottom of the curve. So in this section, if I remove this, you can see that this bottom line is 10, this upper limit here is 20. So if I go to that middle, remember that counts by five, I know that that's 15, 16, 17. Hits the bottom of that curve. And then we're looking at the thermometer. Now I know that this one was a little bit blurry, so I zoomed in a little bit. The reason that I wanted you to use the paper is kind of how I have this pink dot here. It allows you to trace that line over to the actual graduations in the thermometer. And we can see that this big bottom line here is 30. And if we count up, we go one, two, and three. So it's 33 degrees. But remember, we need to make sure that we're using the correct units, 33 degrees Celsius. All right, so what we see here is a picture or a GIF of the Earth. Um, as this is rotating on its axis, right? So remember, that means that it's rotating in this direction. The axis is that line that connects, invisible line that connects the top to the bottom. Um, as this is rotating on its axis, what do you see the most of? What is it that you're observing? Now, I feel like me, you probably said water. As it's rotating, we do see some land masses, but we mostly are seeing a lot of blue, a lot of water. And that's because almost two thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by water. So what is it exactly that we know about water? Well, that's pretty much what we're gonna be talking about today. There are 326 million trillion gallons of water. And just to kind of help us visualize that a little better, I'm gonna show you what the numerical form of that looks like. That is what 326 million trillion looks like completely out in numerical form. It's a lot of zeros, y'all. I'm sure you can see that for yourself. It's a lot of zeros. So if there's so much water, why is it that we're seeing constantly on the news, um, different climate activists, why are people so concerned about water shortages, right? What is the big deal? Well, in order to answer that, we need to look at how the water is made up. What is exactly this breakdown that we can observe as we're looking at the Earth's water. So what I want you to notice first is that this graph represents all of the water on Earth. So all of that water that we saw, sorry, in this spinning Earth, we're talking about all of it. And when we break that down, we get this graph, it's pie chart, and it shows us that 97% of the Earth's water exists in the ocean which leaves 3% as fresh water. Now that's important because in the oceans, we know that it's made up of salt water. We can't drink it, right? We can't drink it safely. We can't always use it for the things that we need water for. We know that fresh water 
is the only kind of water that is safe for human consumption. So what kind of water is safe for human consumption? Fresh water. And we use fresh water for a lot of different things. We use it for drinking, right? After we exercise, sometimes we need water. We use it for cooking, can't boil pasta without it. Agriculture, it's a fancy word for all of the plants growing, all of our crops, cleaning. Um, and along with that comes personal hygiene. So these are just a very few of the categories that we use fresh water for. So let's go ahead and break it down even more. When we're talking about the fresh water on earth, we can actually look at it in terms of numbers again. Now this chart, I need you to understand, this is different from the chart before. The chart before showed all of the water on earth, everything everything that we saw in that rotating earth. This chart is only talking about the fresh water on earth. And we know, again, fresh water only accounts for 3% of all of the earth's water. And when we're focusing on that fresh water, this is the breakdown that we see. We're seeing that 69% of fresh water exists in glaciers and ice caps. We also then know that 30% of the world's fresh water is located in the ground. It's groundwater, and we'll talk about how it gets there in a sec. Which leaves only 1% on the surface, the surface fresh water. And again, we'll break that down in just a second. So really quickly, where is the majority or most of the Earth's fresh water? in the glaciers and the ice caps. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures of what water in these places looks like. This is a glacier. Right? It's a frozen river of water. And these are the caps. These are the, um, the caps of the earth. So we're looking at the North Pole, we're looking at the South Pole. Everything that's in white is frozen. So is this fresh water? Well, yeah. These this is, both of these are fresh water and this is what accounts for the most of the fresh water on earth. Is it easily accessible? Well, you tell me. If we're looking at this map super closely, we are right here. This is where Southgate is, Los Angeles, right? That's Southern California area. And the ice caps are here. So is it easily accessible? Not really, no. The water in the glaciers and ice caps is frozen. If you need to drink water, can you just scoop water from a glacier? Mm, not really, right? It's frozen. It's not in the correct phase. It's also very far. So the majority of these glaciers, especially the ice caps, are at the poles. If we're over here, it's a whole long way that we need to take it. And even if we were able to transport it, we still have that small teeny problem that it's frozen. We can't exactly use it. It would take additional work to get it to a phase where we can use it. So is this a good source of fresh water for humans to use easily? Nope, not really. So we're gonna move on. But remember, the problem is that this counts for 69% of all of the water on Earth. Next, we have groundwater. Remember, this was that 30% of the fresh water on Earth. Groundwater is exactly what it sounds like. It's water that's in the ground. I know that this has gas and oil. We're just going to ignore that for a second because I wanted to show you a graphic that shows how deep this water can be. This is the surface. And this is the water. So groundwater is water that absorbs into the water after rain and runoff. We've been having a lot of rain this past couple of weeks. And so what's happening is after the ground, you know, um, the roots and everything get what they need, it starts to go lower and lower and lower into the crust. Eventually, it collects underground. Now, where it collects depends on where it is that the rain is falling. Some places it's very deep. Some places those water tables where that water collects are pretty shallow. While this is fresh water, we can drink this, this isn't exactly easily accessible, right? We're up here. This water is way down here. So we need to find ways to access it. It's going to take work to use this. So just to kind of show you a little bit, we're going to talk about, let's pretend that this is our surface, right? This black line that goes across. And these are different wells that were dug by humans to access groundwater. Remember, the groundwater is this blue line here. It's far, far below the surface. 
So when we dig these wells, as the water is passing through and collecting, it's collecting into the wells. What happens is that humans begin to then pump the water out in order for us to use daily. And what can happen if we're not careful is we'll end up, those same wells will look like this. We can see that B has been pumped unsustainably. That means that we've pumped up out, we've pumped all of the water out of it. There's nothing left until it collects again. And with C, we're doing basically the same thing. A hasn't been pumped yet. And usually that's kind of like what happens. They won't pump all of them at once to make sure that we have enough, but right, we're getting really close here. So we need to make sure that even though this is usable, we need to use it sustainably. So that was groundwater. So then the remaining tiny piece of fresh water is surface fresh water, which is basically what it sounds like. It's fresh water that's on the surface. This is fresh water that we can see. And it comes in a lot of different types. We have streams, swamps, plains, lakes, and we'll talk about that breakdown in a second. Remember, this is only 1% of all fresh water on Earth. This isn't 1% of all of the water that we saw on our globe. This is 1% of the fresh water. That's 0.03% of all of the water on Earth. It's a very, very tiny, <clears throat> excuse me, very tiny percentage. Where do we find that? Well, the majority of it is found in the lakes. These are the Great Lakes of the US. Um, the lakes are the biggest reservoirs, right, where we have water collected of fresh water. Now, lakes are very important because they support many different ecosystems. They also store the water from various runoff sources. Um, so these are some of the ecosystems. We're actually going to look at this a little later when we talk about food webs. But these lakes are created from various runoff, right? We have rivers and streams. Now, there's other instances of surface freshwater, we have swamps. Swamps, again, are freshwater. These, this is a very important ecosystem and a very important natural barrier for the earth. And we'll talk about that when we go over erosion. Then we have rivers. We saw that in the previous one. Rivers are um, what feed into various lakes, um, and sometimes even into the oceans and seas directly. So that was a lot of slides about fresh water, right? Why, why would I give you so much information about that? Well, we need fresh water as our most basic need to stay alive. When something is this vital, it's a fancy word for important, to our well-being or for us to be alive, we need to know a lot of different things about it. For example, how much is available? Well, we can see that it's really not that much, right? We also need to know where it's located. Because this is so important for us to stay alive, we need to know where it is so that we can access it. But then even in that, how much of it is easily accessible? We saw that the majority is in the glaciers and in the ice caps. That's first of all, not in the correct phase for us to use it. And it's also incredibly far from where we are. But also how much of it is safe? Yeah, lakes and streams and rivers are made out of fresh water, but sometimes we have some unwelcome visitors in it. And we need to make sure that all the water that we are using is safe. <clears throat> so why is water important? Why do I need to know this? <laughs> we need it for a lot of different things, not just for drinking. We need it for our food. The water that we use in agriculture, right? Kind of like we see here, it waters the food, it waters our plants. Um, for meat, right? It's water, drinking water for the cows, for the pigs, for any sort of um, meat animal that we might consume. Also for transportation. While this is a cruise ship, right? There's al also other types of transportation. All of our Amazon packages might be coming from overseas, right? From different continents. And sometimes the easiest way to transport that is via the water, right? Through the ocean. It's also energy. Things like dams and hydro, <clears throat> hydroelectric power, we depend on water for that. And sanitation systems, right? Things like our toilet, things like our showers. You probably didn't want an animated GIF of that, so I just went ahead and included a picture. <clears throat> but we need water to live and to live comfortably. 
just wanted to throw Mushu in there because Mushu's awesome. Let's go ahead and recap. We're just going to quickly go over those main components that we just talked about, which of course means that it is time for Major Key! Let's go ahead and go over major key number one. Vast means huge. Vast majority of all of Earth's water is salt water. That's in the oceans. Humans cannot safely drink salt water. We can't do it. Major key number two. Only 3% of the Earth's water is fresh water. Humans can potentially drink fresh water. Major key number three. Of the small amount of fresh water, most of it is frozen in glaciers. Remember, that's too far and it's frozen. Or trapped in the earth as groundwater. It takes work to access. Which means fresh water that is easily accessible to humans is a teeny super teeny tiny percent, way less than half a percent of all of the water on earth. So remember, we got to conserve water, y'all. All right, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to um, submit your exit ticket in Illuminate and reach out during office hours if you have any questions.